as public outrage greets the blockage of food to the south. Some governments say it is an opportunity for the southern region to increase its food production capacity. And the Jangere girls were freed with the help of repentant bandits. And no ransom was paid, so says Governor Matawale of Zamfara State. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Marianne O'Connor. Several organizations such as the Afenifera Ohanes in Digbo and the Pan Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, among others, have condemned the halting of food and cattle supply uh, to the south from the north by the Amalgamated Union of Foodstuff and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria. Some southern state governments and farmers have, however, said it is an opportunity for the south to boost its food production capacity. However, uh, the Arawa Consultative Forum has advised the federal government to address the complaints of their union. To discuss this, I have uh, Alester Wilcox, who's a public affairs analyst, and Bola Oba, also a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity to be on your side, Rachel. Uh, thank you for having me. All right, great. It's my, it's my pleasure. Interesting. I'm going to um, go straight to the point. Mr. Oba, I'll start with you. Uh, these reactions that we're getting from all of these uh, regional forums uh, or um, <coughs> groups and associations obviously is a form of displeasure that has been registered from both sides, including the um, ACF. Um, what do you think the reason is? I mean, of course, they have said that they've stated their reason. In fact, let me just go straight to the reason. They're asking for compensation uh, for their people and the businesses that were destroyed during the NSARS protest and, of course, uh, during this uh, Shasha violence. Um, and they're asking for some form of compensation to the tune of 4.75 billion naira uh, for members of their association or people from their region that were attacked. Um, what are your thoughts on these reasons? Is this good enough a reason for them to uh, totally shut themselves down from coming, bringing their wares to the south? I would ordinarily have had no problem with the reason to seek a form of recompense or a form of help from the government because ordinarily insurance seldom covers rioting and, uh, and damages from, from riots. I would ordinarily have had no problem with that if the if the unnecessary ban had not come into play. And we must say at this juncture that as unfortunate as the damages to their goods and their articles were at, during the Shasha riot, we, they must also remember that Southerners too, indigents of Ibadan lost real estate assets. I wonder who could have lost the most if the person who lost food items or goods in, in, in food items, if that person is calculating four point something billion, one could imagine the magnitude of the loss of those who lost houses to the riot. I would have thought that if they were if they were a bit more mature, if they were a bit more strategic, they would have joined forces with the other elements in the market to have a joint force to placate or indeed implore the federal and the state governments. I remember that when some northern governors with some southwest governors visited, the, the Nigerian Governors Forum said they were going to do something to, to alleviate the unfortunate circumstance of the traders. Mm -hmm. they, they should have been chasing that angle, but to just wake up one day and say you are placing a total ban of supply of perishable goods to the most economically and commercially viable market for those goods unilaterally. Because you said the federal government has not responded to your demands, that ordinarily should should 
be a wake up call to those of us in the South that we are living at the mercy of a neighbor who is ready to use hunger to fight us. And I see no reason why state governments and indeed people in leadership like myself should not encourage our youths, should not incentivize people to take to farming now. Mm. Interesting. I will come back to you because I want to push you further on that issue of farming. But let's go to Alester Wilcox. Um, Alester, a lot of people are saying that this is this was a long time coming. People had and they say that this would happen, maybe not under these circumstances, but they had always said that there will come a time when you know the issue of food coming from the north to the south will be somewhat weaponized or withheld. Uh, to send a message across. For you, what does this reek of? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, sorry, unfortunately, my, my Zoom network is a bit uh, drabby, so let's manage the phone, the phone uh, network, I mean, the, I mean, the phone uh, ar architecture here. Very well. Um, some of us have talked about this long time ago. We have, I have on various fora, I'm sure uh, my brother Abolagba will be a witness uh, we have met on various fora when this ethnic profiling and hatred against a section of the country and direct insult and abuse of a section of the country, calling them parasites, contributing nothing to the nation, and feeding fat on the south. When those narrative was going on, I was one of the few voices that has that have called out and be saying this: that look, let us not push this narrative too far. It will come to a point when the those you are pushing, you know I mean, if you push a goat to the wall, you will always react. So when you call people parasites, you say, oh, the South has the oil, the, the South feeds the North. You forgot also that the North holds the food basket of the, of the country. And then you think that one day, these persons you are pushing and you are insulting and you are calling, will not one day react. I think that was that was that, I mean that was being uncharitable with the situation. So we are, that's where we are find ourselves now. And how how did we get to this level? We got to this level because leaders of thoughts that we are supposed to have pushed the national narrative, the national question and cohesion has continued. And that's why I'm surprised that a point like a friend, a very pan there for South South is coming up to talk because they are one of the people that have pushed this to this level. They are one of people that have that have expanded whatever divisions we have today into these bodies, what, and what, and I'm unapologetic about what, it. What, what do you mean when by why, what do you mean by Fenifer, Pandev, and the um, um, Ohaneze pushing or oh, bringing us to this point? Uh, yes. Because, where, where, were they the ones who went to um, um, destroy the things in Shasha? Were they the ones who uh, were looting? Were they the hoodlums who looted? things I, um, from I, stores see, um, and shops I, see, across um, the country? What, um, were they the I ones? Think, I'm talking about how we push the narrative. I didn't say how did how, how did we get to Shasha. I mean how in every circumstances, especially since 2015, it has been the North against the South. Though the South will succeed, the South feels the North. And Penny has been the one issuing this this thing. Oh, if we do not restructure, this country will finish. Pandem, they now have a, an, 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 an What is wrong with restructuring? What is wrong? What is the evil in asking for restructuring? If there is no think, ego. So, there so, is no ego. So why are no you ego. saying that an, a Fanny Ferris push for restructuring is why, is why we're no, here there today? Is no, there is no ego in asking for restructuring. So? But when you start to profile a people, when you start to openly insult a people's sensibility, when you start to call people names that they do not deserve, when you begin to undermine the contribution of this set of people, I'm from South South. Don't think I'm a Northerner. I'm from South South. I'm a Nigerian. And I believe in the entity called Nigeria. But when you begin to insult a particular people, you call them names, you abuse them, you say they, are, they don't contribute anything, you call them parasites, and because of that, you want to restructure the South has the oil, the South feed the, okay. the country. You are sowing the seeds of what happened in Shasha okay. and the reaction. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I didn't say I feel afraid went to Shasha to cause trouble. Okay. But I said when you sow those seeds, it will germinate. Because the okra you sow today will throw to an oak tree if not checked. And that's what we're having today. Okay. Uh, let me come back to you, Mr. Oba. Um, 
the Afeni Ferre or Hanese uh, Pandef have called on the northern um, groups and, of course, the association um, that was as the Amalgamated Union of Foodstuff and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria. Um, they have asked that they try to prove their point in a different way instead of towing this line. Um, I, I, they're saying that this is a pointless move and that it would not necessarily yield anything. So, but I want to ask, what point do you think that these um, dealers are trying to prove, you know, again, let's not forget that they're not necessarily um, the people who are farming in the north, they're not the ones who rear the cattle, they're just dealers. These are people who have their wares come into the, this part of the country and then they make money from it. Do you think they're trying to make a point on behalf of their people, especially buying into what Alester has said, that there, there might have been some form of profiling uh, that has led to these people reacting in the way that they have reacted. Could they be trying to prove a point to us with this action? They never said it was the profiling that culminated in their blockage. They never said so. They specifically lasered in on the losses they suffered in the Shasha riots. And I must say at this juncture, that my friend and brother, Alistair, should realize that one of the unfortunate faces of rabid partisanship in Nigeria at this juncture is that we all profile each other. It's not only the people in the North that have been profiled. Uh, and the North is not a monolithic political, the North is not a monolithic polity. In the north, you have the north central. And to be honest with you, at the last, at the last national conference, the north central essentially voted for the same provisions for amendments of our constitution in the same direction as the south south, the southwest, and the southeast. So when we are talking about the north, we should not be given an impression that we are talking about a monolithic polity. Indeed, but the North Central is the Tuba, Tuba capital of Nigeria. Yams, potatoes, and, and, and all the tubros, uh, uh, food items, are uh, more, more uh, in, this in, the, in, the, in the North Central. So we need to be careful. I want to agree with Alistair on the fact that we need to be a bit more sober the way we portray ourselves. The portraiture has become so ugly. Unfortunately so, under a president that seems to be somnolent, that seems to, to have gone asleep. This presidency has so gone asleep that the, 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 the prisoners are now controlling the, the prison. The, the, the prison waters. Uh, uh, it, it does seem now that the mad people are controlling this. Uh, controlling the, I'd like, the, 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 I'd like the, to butt in the there if you don't mind. If, if you don't mind, Mr. Albert, just um, sorry. Um, the issue of profiling, and, and I, I, I'm not comfortable with the word, but then. We are all guilty. We are all guilty. I was about, to, I, I was about to go there because. I don't think we, we always leave the complaints at the foot of our leaders, but of course, we are leaders one way or the other. Mr. Alba, you're a leader in your home, you're a leader in your I, community. That's what I said, that's what and I I'm said, saying I that the average, that the average, the average, the average, the average, go ahead. That, that, that's what I said. I will agree with Alistair that one of the ugly faces of our, of our politics as at this juncture is the demonization of the other side. And I used the phrase rabid partisanship. And we all need to recline from that madness to a more profound degree of sobriety and sanity in our speeches and how we portray each other. But having said that, on the issue of this specific blockage, a group of people suffered a loss. And these people span a cross-section of our tribal 
tribal portraiture. The Northerners brought their goods to the market. The Southerners owned properties. And the riot ultimately made them to suffer losses. The two sides. Should they now not be conjoining forces to seek a form of recompense to alleviate their circumstance? Should one, should one group but just what say, if, what you if, know what? What if, what, what if, Mr. Alba, what if the people who are in the South have somewhat been able to get some form of recompense from, or compensation rather, from their government, um, like the no, Sasha? No, 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 I'm, no, just, no, I'm, just, I'm just saying, what if? And these Northerners cannot come to Lagos State government and say, well, our goods or our wares were destroyed and we want you to compensate us. They feel more left out, again, because we are a people divided, whether we believe it or not. We're divided Let's along speak, these lines of ethnicity. Let's and so it pays speak. them. Maybe it does pay them better. No, let's speak to hypothesis. Let's speak to facts. The, some governors visited and said to the victims who suffered the losses, that the Nigerian Governors Forum would find a way of helping them as much as they could, not totally, not totally uh, redeem their losses, mm -hmm. but promises were made by a party of governors comprising of Southwest governors and Northern governors. Once again, what if we, you and I live in this country, and I'm not in any way trying to hold um, you know, uh, hold brief for this um, group of people. But I'm just saying, we have had many promises made to us as Nigerians, and none of those promises have been made. Why should these people be believe the, the governor's forum? And what if the governor's forum has not in any way, uh, you know, kept that promise? And these people legitimate, need, they need, they, yes, they need something to go back to. Reasoning. Le legitimate reasoning, but would it not be better and far more effective if they were to join forces with people from other parts of the country that also suffered losses during the same incident than to just yank themselves up and, walk and believe that they could use an advantage that they seem to have, not only on that particular instance, but to hold the federal government meant to ransom. This is, this is almost kidnapping in another format. Okay. You know, wanting to hold the federal government to ransom to pay them for their own losses alone. When ordinarily they could have joined forces with other, other elements in the market who also suffered losses. Okay. That's the point I'm making. All right. But nobody can discountenance the importance of your point. Because we get to this point, we have reached this point in the first instance because of the disillusionment of the people with those in leadership. Okay. Across the starter, local government, state government, and federal. Okay. Um, Alastair, the DSS yesterday um, invited members of this um, amalgamated union of foodstuff and cattle uh, dealers of Nigeria to their offices. And of course, they did say nicely that they were invited for questioning. Why do you think the DSS got involved in this in the first instance? It's just the people asking for compensation, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't know why the DSS got involved. Um, I wouldn't know the role the DSS is played. I wouldn't know the extent of negotiation for which the DSS should be involved. I am not um, in the know of the uh, uh, back, back end working of the situation. But if, if truth must be told, we will must understand, like my like uh, maybe Gwale is disagreeing with me on some point. We must understand that this is not the first time we are having this kind of riot. Remember, during the uh, NSAS protest, these same Northerners suffered massive losses in Lagos in uh, in that what do you call it? That's in area. I don't know. I can't remember the name now. Where series of their trucks with their goods were deliberately targeted and burnt. That is just during the NSAS. Now, was the NSAS a, any, in any resemblance to the Northerners bringing their trailers with their goods into Lagos? Now, these are the, like I said, this is the first time we've had clashes. My 12, being a central market, has always been a, 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 a theater of clashes between the, the Northerners and the Southerners. 
on trump up maybe some little little things but it has always been managed and we didn't get to this level how come shasha got to this level that they now want him to uh, uh, hold with whole food and that's south that's why i said it has an origin and that origin is the fact that people in the south we in the south have been too arrogant or whatever resources we have and we think and we think it not has nothing what is happening now for me is just a showmanship because i know the north cannot consume what they are producing the south remains the market for the north most of the things produced in the north tomatoes pepper all those things they are not consumed like they the not they are consumed in the south even this uh, 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 beef how many times did not eat it they eat ram the cow and this thing is mainly consumed in the southwest and, and part of the south i'm, so, I'm so sorry i'm north. sorry lester i'm really <clears throat> sorry i apologize but i need to butt in there um i want to take you back to my question i didn't say you should tell me what's happening with the dss i asked what you think or why you think the DSS got involved. And, and let me set a precedence, for example, or let me set an example. The DSS only gets involved in issues when they feel it's a national issue, a national security issue. And I'm, I'm again asking, these people are asking for compensation and they've said we're not going to send food to the South. Is this an issue of national security? Oh, yes, it's a major issue of national security. Major issue. when. When you have to talk about food security, part of national security is food security. And that is why you have ministries of agriculture at every level. And that's why you have National Council of Agriculture. That's why you have, national, that's why you have every uh, uh, parameter talking about agriculture and food security. That's why you have silos, uh, storages all over the places. But food is a national security. And that's why you have security for the, uh, for the ways, right of way for food to pass. In war, food is a major element of diplomacy and and and, the, and, the, and warfare so food is a national security okay if there is no food in a part of the country of course there'll be riots there'll be there'll be revolts and of course that will threaten the entire nation so for the dss they must have seen ahead for them to get involved okay and so that they can meet whatever uh, outcome uh, in the world before it becomes a, food is a national security issue All everywhere right. in the world that All is right. why i have the world food organization you have the fao because worldwide, food is a security issue. All right, it's Alexa. only a man that is living that can do anything. All so right. if you are hungry, Thank a hungry man is an angry man and can undermine Thank any you, system. Thank um, Mr. Alba, I'm coming to you. Um, just in, in 30 seconds, I, I need you to be able to uh, explain something to me. I find it very interesting that when we have issues such as this, um, when... You know, for example, what happened sometime in 2017, if not 2018, 2017, when we had the uh, tomato scarcity, when, um, you know, something happened, we had pests invade some of the farms in the north. Then we all now had that light bulb moment uh, in the south. And in the, you know, in the southwest, we now realize that, oh, we have farms. We're not farming enough. We don't have enough people in agriculture. Why do we wait until something happens? Uh, we blame our leaders for you know, being reactionary. But of course, we the people are part of the problem. We, when I was in secondary school, we did agricultural sciences. We encouraged people to go into farming, but as it is today, farming is supposed to become, in fact, has become something bigger than hoes and machete. But we wait until things like this happen in the South for us to start thinking, oh, let's start looking within. Why do we always wait for stuff to happen before we really realize how powerful um, you know, agriculture can be, especially with the kind of land that we have in the South? Because it is in our nature. It is in our nature to be like a bicycle. Leadership is like, like a bicycle. Followership is the same. Let's be very honest with ourselves. Um, there's a part of me sometimes that wonders if the black man is actually uh, a complete homo sapien because look around the world and show me that um, predominantly black society where you, where you see leadership being, being proactive and where you, you indeed see followership. Well, I can, well uh, I can tell you one, Mauritius, I can tell you one, there are very many African, black African countries, maybe Ma not in, Mauritius, in West Africa. Ma 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 Mauritius. <laughs> My sister, there are, countries, you, there are countries that have uh, good leadership uh, and they're proactive. I, I know my sister, 
I have read too much of international politics than to be to be given Mauritius as an example or Botswana as an example. My sister, if you don't get it right at the level of countries like Nigeria, Democratic Republic of Congo, countries, Ethiopia, countries with population well above 10 million, you could, those ones could just be, you're, you're, you're telling me Mauritius. But you asked for you, you an, know an example and I gave you one. Oh, let me just say, let me just say it this way. It, there's nothing, nothing that is happening in the South that is not happening in the North when it comes to leadership failure and when it comes to even followership, okay. not being, not being, uh, not having the initiative to maximize the opportunities at their disposal. Okay. I am one who ordinarily was gladdened with the blockade. And you know why I was glad in? Because I co I have an investment in a farmstead, in a vegetable farmstead somewhere in Badagri. And I got a test message from the Lagos State, from uh, the, the farm manager, that the Minister of Agriculture, or the Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture and the FarmSec would send a delegation to come and interact with farmers with a view to incentivizing how they could maximize Again, that is a, that that's a clear example of medicine after death. But I said 30 seconds, Mr. Oba. Let me quickly go to Alesta. We're wrapping it up now. Alesta, in 30 seconds, what happens to the relationship that is already shaky within around the regions, across the regions in Nigeria, especially the south versus the north, uh, with all of this that is happening right now? And we're all advocating for unity. We're all advocating that we all drop our arms and you know, try to embrace peace. What does this particular move do, quickly? As we wrap up, well, 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 I think it is time to for anybody to know that uh, we all need ourselves. Uh, despite who is uh, the president of Nigeria, which party is ruling at the center or at the state, it is time for everybody to know that uh, the common man on the streets has no business with who is in Asso Rock or which party is win. Who, who, who will suffer more is the common man, the okay. trader that is in mile twelve waiting to get a uh, supply of tomatoes to sell that he wouldn't sell. That's who we suffer. So okay. it's nice right. time for us to understand that this country, everybody has something on the table. Do not think that only one person has this on the table. Everybody has something on the table. And we must respect each other. We must okay. deal with each other with the highest level of respect and right. tolerance. That is where we must go. And talking right. about the South. Uh, Alessa, we're out of time. Eyes, I said 30 seconds. I think seconds. it is time for go. us to know that we Alesta, don't need to be building thank churches you very much. and thank estates. You. But we Thank should you go so in agriculture. Much. Alester, That's we the have only to way go. to go. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much for being part of the conversation. Uh, Walaoba, Alester Wilcox, both public affairs analysts. Thank you for being part of this conversation. It's always my pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we will explore the means through which the abducted Jangere girls were freed. We'll be right back after this break.